Good morning, Grace Lifers. Oh, it's wonderful to be with you again. Oh, we just started a little tradition here on Thursday and Friday. Just wanted to show you I still got it. And if you want to know a little bit more about that, you've got to listen to the Thursday and the Friday messages. But I thought let's start with a funny story today. And it's called the water polo story, all right? Now, I thought I was a big deal. Made South Africa, university, water polo. Thought I was a big, big cheese here in this, uh, this nation. And I got selected at varsity to go to the Beijing Student Olympics. And um, it's quite a big thing, you know. Like, it's like, first time I'm going to represent my country. Like, it's one of those prideful moments, you know. Like, you're going to die for your country, that kind of thing, you know. Whew. But anyway, I was doing... Um, my training as best as I could in Grahamstown, where the weather was slightly colder than Durban, and there were no heated pools. And so in four degrees water, I tried to do my training. Well, just to say the least, uh, I wasn't as fit as the rest of the guys. So I was training with two wetsuits, and that doesn't do justice for a water polo player that needs to tread up and get above his costume line and all that, you know. So I wasn't fit as I should be going to Beijing. So they called me the leg of on of the tour. But anyway, comes to, you know, when everyone else is training, they are ahead and you just check this, oh, battling, <laughs> just to breathe. But anyway, um, this is for my country, eh? You know, I'm going to really give it my all. So anyway, first debut is against Austria. And it's, it's a big thing. Hey? We've got these gowns on, our water polo hats. If anyone knows water polo, it's like soccer in the pool, all right? And you've got these little earmuff things, and I've got my country's badge on the side. And anyway, we, we line up, we walk out, hey, all like formal, and there's a huge crowd. You know, like a rugby stadium, Sharks stadium full. Water polo is a big deal there. I don't know if it was a renter crowd or whatnot, but all the Chinese people just... Whoosh, Live TV on international TV. I'm on, we're out there. And you know, it's, it's humbling when the camera scans like this. And when it comes to me, it has to go like that. And then, because everyone else is six foot four and I'm the smallest guy in the tournament. And I'm there and I'm, I'm like, well, anyway. Africa. Very proud moment. Amazing. And then they call out each of our names and they go like, you know, all those kind of Polish names, uh, uh, Austrian names. So, and then it comes to me, Sydney Jolson. And you do this little number and you get back in and, wow, it's like, you know, it just starts hopping up, getting even bigger and bigger. We get into the pool. You know, I'm trying my best. And I'm passing. You just see these guys are well-oiled machines. Eh? These guys. And like South African Oaks are like trying to pick up the pool, the, you know, like that, ah, just trying to stay above the water. Anyway, because I was unfit, they put me in the second seven, which is like the bench guys sitting on the bench. Anyway, I'm, I, we are three nil down and it's only a minute and a half into the game. So it's going to look like a cricket score here, you know. And so I remember the coach, he lost his mind in this moment and he turned to me because maybe he could have done that in the curry cups that we played here. But an international different story. He turns to me and he says, Sydney, make it happen. I get in the water and I just go for it with all my might. And I just, I'm in there, I'm wrestling and I'm, I'm trying to fight for the ball. I get the ball, I take a shot and I'm missing. And then the, we sprint up, down, up, down, up, down. I must have sprinted about eight lengths and this is only a minute in the game. So next thing, I'm a little bit out of breath, but you know, I'm going to defy all natural ability and physicalities and physiological stuff. I'm going to go for it. You know? And then so next thing, the, these guys, professionals, this is like their number one sport in their country. So they're a big deal. 
big guys. Next thing, they, they do a swap. And this hairy, big Neanderthal guy with long arms. I just remember long arms. Next thing, I'm marking him. And I'm not supposed to be in this position in front of the goals because I'm the smallest, shortest guy. So next thing, I'm, 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 I'm fretting and I'm anxious. I'm saying, hey, guys, swap with me. Whatever they said, no, no, just mark him, mark him. And next thing, while I'm in anxiety and fear, he goes, whoops, through my costume. Now, my cozy is on his forearm. So I'm like, hey, what's going on here? And this big oak just leans back, and under the water I go. And the attacks are 35 seconds long. So I must have been under the water for 30 seconds, which when you haven't taken a proper breath, and when you've also swam eight lengths, it's quite a story. So I'm under there and I'm, and I'm fighting for my life. I remember doing everything illegal. I had to repent. I tried everything to get out from scratching and biting to pulling to whatever, to, to, to whatever. I was doing nothing could help. And eventually I did the most illegal thing. I got my hand out around his fossicus here and I just went, ah, and I pulled myself out and I got a breath. So I wasn't going to die and I was under again. Next thing, change of position, and I swim again for my life because I'm gonna, I want to score a goal for my country. I want, I want South Africa to do well. And then, so anyway, we go there, counter attack, eventually a goal goes in. This is only a minute and a half. And then they score a goal, 4 oh, 0, and the whistle blows. All adrenaline is lost. And now, next thing, the reality sets into my body. Shock, trauma, because I nearly died under the water, plus I sprinted and I've given myself completely. So next thing, my whole body shuts down, traumatized. So I, I tell the coach, can I come out? It's only a minute and a half in the water. He breaks down laughing on the side of the, on the, on the pool. He just, okay, come, come, come. So anyway, I try and make it from the middle of the pool to the edge. But I can't swim now. I can't even do an a, 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 a arm over. So now on live television in China, I'm doing doggy paddle. The ref is not buying this. He says, you're supposed to be an international water polo player. You know, I'm, I'm trying my best, bro. Just, just calm down, you know. I get to the edge of the pool. You know, you just got to do that, that, that little tricep number. You know, you just, and then you can flop over. I couldn't do that. Muscles are shut down. So he's, he's getting irritated with me. He's over me. So I sunk all the way to the bottom of the pool. And there I am. I'm saying, Lord, please help me. I need to get out. So they're all waiting on me. So i do the biggest push I can ever do. And I get there, and the next thing I just flop like this, on a, like a seal. Bah! And I, I almost fall on his shoes and everything. And so he's like, what's going on here? And then I remember having to get up and then stagger to my seat, hoping not to fall into the water and to cause some kind of penalty to my side. And that was my first international debut as a South African water polo player. I hope that got the juices flowing this morning. That was not a good witness for my country. We got to be trained. We got to be strong. We got to take whatever, whatever conditions and circumstances we're going through that have been thrown at us in life, that there is joy in Jesus. To be an effective witness is not something that is just going to happen. You have to be intentional. I needed to be intentional to be a good representative for my nation over there. I didn't have the means and the, 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 the tools and the, the power to do so, but we're putting that in your hand this morning to be effective witnesses. You are a witness. You are a witness already for Jesus. It's just, are oh, you a good witness? You are witnessing in some way. What kind of a witness are you? All right. This morning, I pray that there would be an effectiveness 
that's going to come out of Grace Life Church for every single one of you. Because not every one of you are evangelists. Maybe you won't be an evangelist gift, but every one of you are witnesses. Acts 1 verse 8, it says, when the Holy Spirit comes on you with power, you will be my witnesses from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Anyone been baptized in the Holy Spirit here? Anyone felt the Holy Spirit's touch? All right. Well, you are baptized to be a witness. You have purpose in the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to go and effect change out there, to be effective out there, to show Jesus, not that you do it in your strength, but it's his life working in and through you. That's the grace of God. He wants to bring the divine exchange. It's him that people would see him in and through your life. Can I pray for us that we would be effective witnesses this morning? And then I'm going to jump into some myth busting. I'm going to bust some myth, myths, lies in your minds around what it means to be a witness. And that you are actually and can be an effective witness. Father, I thank you. That this week with Grace Life has been glorious. It's been wonderful. There's been an activation. There's been an acceleration. And there's been a maturity and a growth. And I just thank you, Father God, that this morning the whole body is going to be affected. The whole body is going to be imparted to. That every soul in this place is going to come alive to the power of being a witness in Christ Jesus. Not in their own strength but a co-labor, a minister of reconciliation because you, Jesus, you live inside of us and you work in and through us. So I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. None of you are oxygen thieves. You have been given breath in your lungs because there's a purpose and a destiny for you to bring change and the kingdom to be advanced in your life. There's places that you are in. Places and spaces and social groups that I will never have impact. I will never have influence. But God has placed you in those places because he's you. You are powerful. You are not a victim. You are not just hanging around, waiting, white knuckling it for Jesus to return one day. You are powerful. You're an overcomer. You are victorious. He has created you to destroy the works of the devil wherever you go. That is who you are. And I want to remind you this morning about who you are. So this scripture in Romans 10, before I get cracking on that, sorry, it's not on there. I just got to flow with the Holy Spirit and they know what that's like. The last couple of nights have been like that. And it says in Romans 10 verse 13, it says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. But how will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How? How are they going to call on? Who do they know who to call on if we don't go and tell them? How are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? Oh, grace lifers, we don't have to preach and, and be like offensive and turn or burn and harsh. And, and, but the kindness of God in every single one of us can be sent out there that we go and we love people and that they would know we're doing this in the name of Jesus and that we would share the love of God wherever we go. I want to tell you, one of the greatest ways, most effective ways for you to be an evangelist or a, a witness is just to be kind. Can you be kind? Instead of going, like I said on Friday nights, I think it was to go get your milk and bread in a, in a bad mood. <laughs> I just want to get my milk and bread. <laughs> you know, and I, I pay the cashier, just get that money out. And, you know, yeah, I'm like, oh, hurry up, man. You know, like, instead, you give her a smile. And you, what's your name, ma'am? Wow, you are beautiful. Do you know that God's got a plan and a purpose for you? Wow. You know that he came and died for you. God loves you. God bless you. Have a great day. I pray God's favor over you. Do you know that 
I want to I wanna just encourage you to be lavish, liberal sowers of encouragement, encouraging words of kindness. The way that you can be an effective witness is to be kind. Do you know that Romans 2 verse 4 it says, it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. It's kindness. We just be kind. Do you know that a gift opens the way for the giver? If you just think about others before yourself through just blessing with a word, maybe it's flowers, maybe it's a meal for someone, maybe it's a visit, whatever it might look like, or just a phone call or a WhatsApp. How easy is that, eh? Think about someone else. Reach out. Be kind. And you're going to see change. This is way easier than you going, all right, I'm going to put on my evangelism coat today. I'm in the telephone booth like Superman. Yeah, that I come. Yeah, hey, da da. I'm switched on now, switched on the button to be an evangelist today. Ha ha. Here I am. Big W on. Witness. Can I get a witness? Hey. Oh my goodness. Come on, what is that? Hypocrisy. Through the week and oh, now I'm an evangelist. Hey? Rather, lifestyle. 24-7, 365. I'm always on to show Jesus, to present Jesus, to let Jesus do whatever He wants in and through me so that I would be obedient. Not just compliant, obeying rules, right and wrong, checklists and whatnot. No, I'm obedient to hear His voice. To live in the spirit, to go after him. God, what are you gonna show me? What are you gonna, what are you, what are you saying? I want to be about the Father's business, because that's what Jesus came. He came to show us the Father. You know, you, we don't get to do this alone, like we left like orphans. We get to live this life co-laboring in partnership with him. It's the greatest journey and joy to be led by the Holy Spirit. Wow. He just opens up. Every incredible adventure. This is exciting life. One of the words I said is that there's no such thing as a bored again Christian. There's only born again Christians. And I want to tell you, it's exciting. Oh, to be born again, that means the life of God, the Spirit of Christ has come and made Himself one with your spirit. You're a new creation. You've been made righteous. You are a new being empowered from above. You're not waiting for heaven one day. Heaven lives inside of you. And you can bring heaven to earth. Come on. You can do it, Grace Love. In His power. In His grace. Okay. So, we're going to start by looking at this beautiful passage in Luke 15. One of the most popular passages in the Bible. We know it. It's the story of the lost coin, the lost sheep. And the lost son. But I'm going to focus on the lost coin for this morning. And I'm going to launch off from there. So Luke 15 verse 8. If you're going to follow me on the screen or in your Bible. And it says, Or what woman, having ten coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Wow. You know, the most amazing thing happened about a month and a half ago. I had the privilege of being sent to Ireland. So Ireland, beautiful nation, beautiful, wonderful. What an, what an experience, what a privilege to go over there and to have a, a little, a wee dunder. I learned a couple of words. That means a little walk, all right? A top of the morning to you, yes, top of the day to you. You know, all these kind of greetings. And, and when I was there and I got to see St. Patrick's Cathedral and St. Patrick was one of the greatest revivalists in that nation, Okay. Now it's become all skewed and there's a lot of doping on St. Patrick's Day and all that. But I went there and I said, God, 
whatever you, you put on this man's life, whatever's available, I want it. And straight after that, next thing, I started finding coins wherever I went. I must have found about 24 coins in my 14, 13 days of being in Ireland. I would find coins on the main road. I would find them in the main path. I found them in little nooks and crannies. All right. I found coins that were in mint condition. I found valuable ones, like a quid, a pound. Hey, you could buy something with that, you know. I found just a penny. I found burnt ones. I found rusty ones. I found ones that were just so messed up that they couldn't even be re uh, recognized again as a coin. I found all these burnt coins and God was showing and he was painting a picture for me. And you know what? I was the only one in the team of five that found coins. No one else found coins. No one else picked up one other coin. And you know why? Because when God awoke in my heart to something, I was seeking for it. I was intentional. I'm like, man, God, you, you're doing something here. And, I'm, I'm, and he, he just started revealing coin after coin. And you know what? Hundreds of people had walked past those coins. Every day, just forgotten, neglected, and just ostracized and left. But next thing, an intentional person saying, God, I'm looking to see what you are doing. And I'm hearing to hear what you are saying. And I found these coins. The exact thing is with people. Could we be intentional every day of our lives? To not just be oxygen thieves, but to say, God, you've got me here for a purpose and a plan that today is just a boring day if someone's life is not changed and transformed. But if I can just one person today shift, sow a seed, give love, be kind, and bring some tra transformation, I am living here with a purpose, with a plan, and with destiny. But you know what it takes? It takes you to be intentional. Waking up in the morning, God, not just praying for myself, me, myself, and our navel gazing Christianity. Oh, me, help me, me. What about me? Hey. Instead, no more mini me's, all right? We want to be people that lift up our heads and gaze upon the king. God, I'm living here for you. You are the king of this kingdom. It's about your rule. It's about your domain. It's about your kingdom advancing. And so I'm part of the gospel of the kingdom. Not just the gospel of hanging on, waiting for the rapture to come and rescue you one day from this evil and harsh world. You are more than overcomers. Life happens to all of us. We're all going through life. We're all going through circumstances and tough things. But I want to tell you, there's a joy that's above every circumstance. And it's Him. It's Christ. The gospel is the gospel of the Son. And the gospel is the gospel of Jesus. He is the essence of this gospel. It's all about the life of Jesus. That is it in simplicity. And so you can have this life every day. It doesn't matter what you're going through. And I want to tell you, I've been through some stuff in the last three years. Ah, big stuff. But I found a joy. I found a rescue. I found a savior. I found a way out. I found a way of living above it. Above it. Seated in my righteousness in the right hand of the Father. In the place of authority and rulership. With my king. With him. One with him. Come on. Amen? Amen. 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 Amazing that this lady in the story, she lights a lamp. That's the first thing. She lights a lamp. You know what we got to do? We got to light up inside here. There's whatever darkness is trying to evade and trying to distract. We got to light it up. I want to tell you that you are not waiting for revival. You know that we've heard these beautiful prayers about this wave that's coming. And we, yes, revival's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And, and then we get so tired and so despondent and hopeless because I prayed for 25 years and I still haven't seen revival. Anyone been there? Hey? <laughs> because we got it wrong. We are revival. I have been revived. Christ is in me, the hope of glory. 
And every day I live as one who's revived. I'm revival. I'm not waiting for something to happen. I am a happening waiting to go out and do it. It's about being intentional. It's about saying, Father, Father, I want to live for you. I want to, I want to hear what you are saying. And I want to... She lights it up. She lights up a lamp. Then goes on to say that she sweeps the house. So some things in our lives, I mean, have you ever been around a place where the home is busy because of cleaning and you just want to have that afternoon Sunday nap? And then you just hear the vacuum going and the dishes being what clang, clang in the kitchen. And, and then next thing you're lying on the couch and, you, and you're just trying to get some relief. But then someone's got to sweep under there because there's dust. And sorry, can you just move here? Sorry, could um, um, we just got to get, um, to, uh, sorry, uh, just underneath here. Can we just get a, a, a little bit? Some furniture has to move in our lives. So that we can be effective witnesses. Some things have to be adjusted in the way that we have a perspective about our living. Because if there's been just the same old, same old, maybe something's got to change. So that we can live in the new creation. Alright? So, move some furniture. Whatever it needs to be to make this a priority in your life. Because I want to tell you, one of the greatest joys is the cry of the newborn. Is when you, you've got those unsaved, yet to be saved, newly saved people in your life. Man, it's a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's incredible. It brings joy. You see this lady, her life lit up with joy. She invited everyone and she said, come rejoice with me. You want rejoicing in your life? You want rejoicing? You want joy? You want to have fun? You want to have a good time? I want to tell you, get on the father's business. About changing, transforming, destroying the works of the devil. Ha! And she seeked diligently, diligently. Every day, we could just have salty prayers, salting our neighbors. I want to just mention today that you all are missionaries. Say this with me today I am a missionary. You are all on mission and you are all sent today. I dub thee missionaries today. You might not go to Ireland like I had, but can you go on the school run for your children, your grandchildren? Because there's people along the, that way that are not targets, but they are treasures. Can you go to the shopping centers, the cashiers, clients, people in their managers, the people begging outside? Can we go there? There's, you've got salt roots. The Virgin Active, the gyms. You are missionary. I send you on the school routes to your workplaces, to your colleagues, to the shopping centers. Wherever there's people, there's opportunity. And all we have to do is just click out of me, myself, and I and say, Father, what are you doing? If there's anything you want me to do, I'm ready. I'm available. Send me. Send me, God. And so I want to bust a few myths this morning. Myth number one. You know the myth busters? We're going to do the whole episode this morning. All right? Check it out. Number one. Being a witness is not my gifting and my ministry. Well, I already blew that out the water when I gave you Acts 1 verse 8 this morning. Every single one of you are witnesses, a priesthood of believers, a royal priesthood. You are all powerful. And I'm here as an evangelist to train, to activate, and to put the fibulizer on your heart, boom, boom, to awaken something. But I'm not the one who's going to do all the evangelizing. It's there for the training of the saints to prepare all the ministry to be done by the body. God's most powerful machine, most powerful thing is the family of God to affect change in this world. And you are the ones God wants to use. I have the greatest joy in my life right now in delegating and releasing people. Coming and I'm not the main oak. 
where I enable myself to do everything and then disable everyone else. That's not my job. My job is to work myself out of a job. So I've come here and I've led worship. So this morning, you see me in the front chair, but I've got Vix and my wife up on stage. And didn't they do a great job this morning? And the whole team, because I want to release, I want to empower, I want to see people grow, I want to see them come into maturity. So I did a training, not only with Grace Life, but with Dwell Church in Pinetown. And I released two of my, 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 my buddies. And one of them is, his name's JP, and the other one is Rudy for Hoof. And so on Saturdays, I didn't go. I was with my family, relaxing, enjoying some family downtime. And then I released JP to do HOTS, which is we call healing on the streets. So they got a, a gazebo, and we've made some banners saying healing. Wow, you should see the, the climatic clash um, that is in the spiritual realm when you put um, banners saying healing on the street. Whoa, you see people get upset. Oh, thank you, oh, you know, and whatever. And even the devil saying, who do you guys think you are that you'd want to do that? And you've got to overcome that and you've got to rise up above that. And you've got to remember your position as a son. And you go out on the streets. And JP brought the most incredible effect and change by taking the dwell church, Pinetown people, and he got them, 14 of them activated. They saw healings in the morning. There are people being, uh, that had been grafted and introduced, integrated into their church. They're, some people were so keen that they've signed up on the new members. The, the, they got there on the Sunday. They got into the introduction welcome lounge afterwards, and they signed up for the camp and have already paid because there was an activation. But that was one of my buddies that I released into that space, JP. Rudy did it yesterday with treasure hunting. And treasure hunting is people are the treasure. Every person is a treasure. And God shows us these clues to go and find these treasures. And so they had a bunch of clues, yellow shirt, black cap, whatever. They found this person at Pine Town School, and it was the headmistress. And now the headmistress has opened Pine Town School for them to minister in whenever and however they want to going forward. People got saved, they got healed. And all of them, apparently there were four teams that probably touched about six people's lives each. All of them want to go to Dwell Church now. I got the message this morning and I was playing it to Ryan. It's my greatest joy to release the priesthood, to release sons and daughters. You are all released this morning to be effective witnesses. And so in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, are you in Christ this morning? Do you believe in Jesus? All right. He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Just say it's passed away. Come on, believe it. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Oh, it is a glorious and beautiful thing. Jesus came and he, he came from heaven to earth to reconcile us to the Father. And now it's our privilege with Christ in us, Christ working in and through us to reconcile people to the Father. You know the new evangelism, new witnessing that the Spirit is on is fathering and mothering. Do you know you care for your children? You care for them? You'll do anything for them, hey? You'll pay whatever it is. You'll do the sacrifice, whatever it is. I wanna tell you that there's a fathering and a mothering that God is calling us into to release sons and daughters, to come alongside and to walk with them, that they're not just the one off like, okay, yeah, yes, great job, so Jesus, whatever, and then they're never in your life again. But you take that person's number and you follow up and you love on them and you invite them to church and you say, can I meet with you and can I, can I disciple you? Because evangelism and discipleship go hand in hand. They are one and the same thing. Don't think discipleship is something else. It is, the, it is both hand in hand together. And I want to encourage you. I'm going to send something to Craig and Dawn that every single one of you have got a link where you can go through seven teachings and you can disciple and bring a new believer into an incredible place of maturity. Quick, quick. And you can do it. 
you are empowered to do it. And so, myth number two. We're going to go through 10 and we're done. And you won't believe how quick it's going to go, so don't worry. All right. I am way too shy. And it's not in my personality to be a witness. Anyone got that in going through their minds? Whoa, I can check a couple of heads nodding here and... Some people are laughing because, you know, when you see the laughter, you know that it's actually hitting right in there like that. Okay? Awesome. I want to tell you, you might think, this oak's quite out there and he's quite a wild oak. All right? Yes, I am. All right? But I've actually tapped into the divine nature. Because before being saved, I was an introvert. I'm still an introvert. You can ask my wife. I love to just be alone and actually just meet myself in our time. All right? And I find it very taxing to actually have lots of conversations and lots of intensity, okay? Some people love the extroversion and, you know, like they've been able to chat in, in big crowds. That's, I need time alone to go and be refueled. And you know what? I was so insecure that I couldn't even have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I couldn't look people in the eyes and I definitely couldn't really express what I felt, who I was, or say, because I didn't, have, I didn't value myself. Now that's where I was in my personality, in the natural, in the flesh. But God has done something where I participated in His divine nature, and now I'm a different person, because I'm a new creation. The old is gone, and the new has come. I want to tell you, do not let the flesh and your so-called personality hold you back. You see, I like to change every moment in my life. It's not waiting just for a God appointment, but actually, you know, I believe in God appointments, that they happen, you know, just out of the blue, wow, God appointment. But I change every moment, not to just be a coincidence, but a God instant, a divine appointment of love, that wherever I go, I get the opportunity to love. Myth number three is I will witness when I feel the Holy Spirit leading me to. Anyone thought that? It sounds nice and spiritual, but it's just not biblical. Because Holy Spirit is inside of you, wanting out all the time. <laughs> and so we as Christians, let's change that these we're not just waiting for divine appointments from heaven and off we go and then we're going to do it. But in fact, we are intentional co-laboring, working together, partnering with them. That every moment, every appointment with whoever it might be, a cashier, a client, that we can change it from an appointment to a divine appointment. Because we carry love inside of us 24-7 all the time. All the time. So I want to tell you that in Matthew 7, verse 7, it says, Ask and you shall receive. And it says, Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Can you say everyone? And the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, it will be open. This, this witnessing is so easy as to just stretching out your hand and just loving and introducing yourself and getting to know someone's name and to ask. Ask, and you shall receive. Ask the question, do you know God's love? I want to tell you, I just want to equip you. Don't, in our context, say, what church do you go to? Don't do that. You might just undermine your whole evangelism witnessing um, moment because that answer has so many different perceptions and, and, and understandings and it can actually lead away from the essences we want to lead them to, Christ. So rather say, do you know that God loves you? Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Mention Jesus, not just God. Because 
God for some would be Allah or Shaktis or Shiva or whatever else themselves or no God. But mention and ask, do you know this love? Just ask and you will receive an answer. Questions are so powerful. I want to empower you to go and ask questions. You don't have to go and give them the whole gospel from A to Z and get them saved and, you know, reap on the belts and, yes, and baptized in the same moment in water and Holy Spirit and then tongues and everything in the 30 seconds in the lift. Be a liberal sower of seed and just ask some questions. Just ask questions. And so seek and you will find. Are you looking? Look, look around and just knock on the door of their hearts. Because you know what? We can build friendship. Friendship. We just, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to live the gospel. I'm going to live it. I'm just going gonna, gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna just show them through my life, you know, that when everyone's having a dope in the party, no, I won't. I won't. I'll just have a Fanta, you know. <laughs> they might ask you, they might not. But I want to tell you that at some point you've got to mention Jesus. You've got to talk about it because how will they know if you do not tell them? So I want to tell you, I probably jumped ahead. That's one of my myths. Myth number four. I have to share the whole gospel and lead them to Christ in that first meeting. So I've just broken down that right now. Myth number five. I don't know enough to witness. Anyone feeling like that this morning? Sid, I don't know enough. Well, I want to tell you, do you have a story? Has Jesus done a great exchange in your life? Because maybe you don't know enough. I'll tell you, I don't know everything. But I want to tell you, I've learned a lot as I've decided and I started to go. And I encountered Mormons the one time. I remember. I said, hey, do you know Jesus and are you saved? And I got a couple of clubs and I didn't then. I said, I'll get back to you. Can I have your number? And then you know what I did? I went and researched. I asked questions. I found out. And then I got back to them and we had another conversation. And I was, you know, now I've got my tail up, you know. <laughs> the thing is, anyone want to grow? Anyone want to get stronger in the Lord? Anyone want to mature into the fullness of Christ Jesus here this morning? Anyone? Well, I want to tell you, one of the most quickest accelerations to growing is going. Is going. So I want to tell you, you're going to learn on the way. He doesn't call the perfect. He calls each and every one of us. I'm not perfect. I'm so glad I don't have to be qualified as perfect because Jesus, Jesus is my perfection. And I get to go and I learn along the way. I want to encourage you. Just go. Anyone got a testimony here? My wife's got a squeaky clean testimony. One of those lovely ones, you know, brought up in a Christian home and whatnot. And in her testimony, at home, at a lunch table, with a Sangoma druggy prostitute, her testimony came and shifted and, and just changed her life, that she gave her heart to Jesus, and she was changed for the rest of her days. So your testimony doesn't matter if it's wild or if it was wonderful, all right? It is all powerful, and God wants to use you. So Revelation 12 verse 11, and they conquered him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. They loved not their lives even unto death. And we'll just jump down to John 14 verse 26. Important to mention this, that he's going to give us the counselor, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name. will teach you all things. And will remind you of everything I've said to you. He's also called the comforter, the counselor, the comforter. So he's going to teach you along the way. Some things have popped out of my mouth that I've been, wow, where did I get that from? Holy Spirit. It's his, his divine life working in and through me. And he's also called the comforter because I want to tell you it's uncomfortable. Don't think, oh, oh. Uh, one day maybe I'll get comfortable doing this. I want to tell you it's scary every day. I, I, I'll shake in my, my boots every day doing this. 
Every conversation where I'm going to, oh my, I remember being in Ireland and I was in the park and I'm just sightseeing now, it's the last day. I'm like, hey, I've done all my work conferencing and, and preaching and all this and now I'm just want to sightsee and there's a guy on the bench and he's got his hoodie on and he's listening to music and he looks angry. And I thought, oh my, I'm going to get a clap if I say hello to this guy. And God says, tell Ireland I love her. Oof, I know what that means. Go and start a conversation. <laughs> you know that I was, I was so scared that there's the guy sitting there, and I was like, ah, yeah, just walk past. <laughs> okay, but you can do this. You, you, you can, uh, now you can see I've stopped, and I'm, I'm looking at him. So he's got that weird, like, you know, what's going on here? And I'm like, all right, yeah, <laughs> sure, all right. <laughs> All right, and eventually I go and I approach him and I speak to him. I started circling him like a shark until eventually I got there. It's always scary. That's why we need the comforter. And I'm thank God He's left us with a comforter. We are not left as orphans. He'll never leave us or forsake us. Myth number six. It's a little bit cut off there. All right. I have so many, issues and challenges that I'm working through before I can be a witness. Oh, that's a perfection mindset. That is a legalistic mindset. And I want to tell you that God wants to use you now. It doesn't matter where you are, what circumstance, what place that you find yourself in, because He has qualified you. You don't get to qualify yourself. He has qualified you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And so one, Philipp, uh, Philippians 1 verse 6, it says, What he starts, be confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. So what he started in you, he will complete. You don't have to complete it by yourself. He will complete. Oh, that's good news. That's grace right there. All right? And so Jude 1 verse 22, it says this, be merciful to those who doubt. You see, we are not perfect. We've all got our issues, and so we all need a lot of tissues, okay? But that gives us a little bit of compassion that when we're dealing with people that are still figuring it out and doubting, because we ourselves are on a process. We are also being sanctified to look like Jesus completely, to be like him, do like him, and live like him. But we already have been made a new creation completely, done deal and sealed. And so we get to live from that reality. Myth number seven, I will just live the gospel and that'll be enough for them. I think I've already said enough about that, hey? We've got to say something, Romans 10. Myth number eight. I'm scared they won't listen to me and that will be, that I will be rejected. Oh, shame, man. <laughs> you poor thing. Did Jesus get rejected? Was Jesus anxious in the garden of Gethsemane? We were sweating blood. Well, I want to tell you that if our Savior, the one who we've been united with, if he went through those things, well, then we are going to go through those things. All right? And so I want, to, I want to just encourage you that we're not to live with the fear of man, but we fear him. We reverence him. We live for him. All right? And so Matthew 10, verse 28 says, And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Myth number nine. This is a big one, and most of us have this. I don't have the time to witness my life is too busy. I don't have the time to go to heart to heart once a month because I'm too busy. 
No, no, what you're actually saying is, it's not a priority for me. I've got other priorities, like the international rugby, or whatever it is. But it's an issue of priority. So I want to just say, you need to have a priority check. Have a priority check in your life. And remember, this is not just about heart to heart once a month. It's not about an event. It's about a lifestyle. Every day we get to wake up and live and breathe this. Myth number 10, as I bring it to a close. What's the point in witnessing? God already knows in his foreknowledge who will be saved and who's going to go to heaven. Well, I want to tell you that view is a hyper-Calvinistic view, Reformed theology. Oh, God knows everything, and so what it does is it creates passivity. And so the church is not mobilized to bring effective change. So I disregard that view completely. I also disregard the view, the Arminius side, where it's all about man's effort and, and, and white-knuckling and striving and doing everything on our own. Both of those are nothing. They are not the truth. But in the center is Ephesians 2, verse 8, where it says we are saved by grace. God has done everything by His grace already through faith. So we have a part to play. We are to co-labor and to partner with Him. And so we are to live saved by grace through faith. God, in His sovereignty, through His Son, has paid Everyone to go to heaven. For all to be saved. That's why John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave a son. That all that would believe would have eternal life. Now, there is a part to play. Because people, and in my research of this, 100,000 people a day are going to hell. Are dying and going to hell every day. So it's with urgency that I give this message. It's not a clever little myth busters thing like to make you and have a bit of fun and a laugh. But there's urgency upon us to actually step into this and say, God, I'm going to be intentional. God, I am going to partner with you. I want to live this life as an effective witness all the days. My destination is a loving relationship with Father God. To do everything with Father God. Not apart from Him but with Him. And so He has paid for everything by His grace. Your salvation, healing, deliverance, peace, protection, comfort, all those things. He has paid for it. And our faith, we get to appropriate it and see it manifest in our lives. And so we're going we're gonna to partner with Him. Allow His life in and through us to come and effect change. But may the bluff never be the same again. Can I pray for you? Father, I thank you that the lost coin would be found. That there would be joy in this house, joy in the households and the families that are represented here and every life. Father, I thank you that there's an activation and an impartation right now that our lives would never be the same again. I thank you, Father God, for a an impartation of evangelism to come upon this church. Holy Spirit, I release whatever I have in my life to come now and to fill and release in their spirits what you've already deposited in them the day that they were born again, the day that they were saved. I'm just awakening and showing them who they are and what they have. I'm not giving you something that you didn't have. You've got it inside of you. And right now, I'll just say, awake, awake. In the name of Jesus. And so I release and I thank you, Holy Spirit, that the bluff would be loved. No longer rough and tough, but I thank you, Father God, smooth and gentle because of the love of God coming over all the beautiful diamonds of this region and sharpening and bringing them into family, home, love, belonging. I release you, Grace Life. I send you. And I hear the commissioning 
of God this morning. Who will go? Who will go for me? And I hear the Isaiah word saying, Send me, Lord. Here I am. Send me. So I thank you, Father God, for a great awakening that the lights would light up in our hearts that we are revival. I just feel like right now God is just showing some people, just keep your eyes closed, please. Actually just asking you to plant churches, plant home groups, maybe plant um, creches in communities for the kingdom. He's asking some of you maybe to go and plant churches overseas or go on trips overseas. I just feel like those of you who, who, who God is saying that to, I'm going to ask you to come up after the service. Okay, I want to pray for it now. If that's you and you're just feeling a stirring right now and activating, I just want you to, I want to ask you to stand. Stand. There's an activation around just seeing a kingdom community develop from church planting, connect groups, home groups, creches, whatever, a business for the kingdom. Right now, if that's it, you're just saying, God, I take that. I receive that now. I want to release something of a blessing into that and an opening and a pioneering and a breaking open anointing in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father God, that you showed me a while a while ago that there's an angel breakthrough that goes around with me. And so, Father, I thank you. I just release breakthrough now. Breakthrough for kingdom advancement and kingdom love. And I thank you, Father God, where that would affect people being loved, integrated, and brought into family. I bless you. Thank you, Jesus. And this morning, I want to give an opportunity now. If you never knew or you don't have a relationship with Jesus, or maybe you've heard about Him, but you haven't, you haven't seen this divine life that I've been speaking about working in and through you. There hasn't been an exchange where He's taken your sins and your old nature and thrown it away, died it on the cross, and you've got His nature now where he's, you've cleansed, forgiven, and set free. I want to give you an opportunity this morning. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to say, God, I'm laying it all down. I'm going to, I'm going to put that at the cross and I want to take up your life. I want that exchange. I want to ask you right now, can you put up your hand? I would love to introduce you to your maker, your savior, to just call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Romans 10 verse 9 says, Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart and you will be saved. Confess that He is Lord. If that's you, can you put up your hand now? Don't be ashamed. We are going to rejoice with you. We are gonna, we're not going to do anything to make you feel uncomfortable other than just pray a prayer and, and just release faith with you. You are saying, I believe in Jesus this morning. Anyone here? we all saved we're all born again and so let's go and see that done in the streets in the homes in the shops in our workplaces and in school runs in Jesus name Amen